a good place to start when you think about the soil is, is what it's like before we make a mess of it. So I've got a hedge here. It's largely a hazel hedge. And in the bottom of the hedge, this is pretty much what nature will create. You know, the, the leaves fall down out of the hedge every year. We've got loads of organic matter on the top. You see this is some fungi working away on it. And the invertebrate worms and so on will take the organic matter down into the soil. And there's really no obvious place between when the, when the actual organic matter finishes and a mineral soil starts. It's all just been slowly integrated in. And if you just sort of rub it, it just falls to paste it into that. It would be a perfect place to sow a seed. And I would almost guarantee that the seed would be very happy and it would grow in that well-balanced soil, which would slowly reduce, the, the organic matter would be broken down, releasing the nutrients and feeding your crop. However, if I were to plant my, uh, my seed in the bottom of the hedge, it wouldn't grow very well because it would have all these hazels up above. So if you can't have trees, which are there sort of perennially for many years, this field was grass last year and it had been grass for a few years. And that's kind of almost as good because that again builds up the structure of the soil, gives it a time to recover. It's been cultivated in good conditions and I know the soil's still going to be pretty good. So let's go and have a look. This field was pasture six months ago. We did plow it and we grew a crop of courgettes. Fortunately, it was dry when we did all the cultivation, so I know we haven't damaged it. And D, digging into it, the spade just goes in really easy, which is always a good sign. Oh, and look, we've got a lovely earthworm there, which is always a good sign of a healthy soil. Plenty of them. And, and it's just crumbling really finely. There's no, no sign of compaction. This is a healthy soil, that, and we've sown a green manure here, a crop of rye, and I just know it's going to grow really well. There's another earthworm. Lovely to see, smaller one. That's very, very gratifying. That's what I feel as a farmer. I've looked after the soil well. It's in good heart. The next crop's going to grow well. It'll return lots of organic matter to the soil and we can grow vegetables again next year. So I've just tapped 20 yards into the next door field and uh, as a, this is a field which I, re I know we've abused. Putting the spade in, it's getting... In fact, I'm going to have to jump on it with both feet to get it in the ground, which is always a bad sign. And it comes up in a spit and you can see the way it's, the soil's fracturing. All the lines are going across ways. There's no air in the soil. There's no structure. I mean, the earthworms are really going to struggle to get through it. Instead of breaking into fine crumbs, it's breaking into sort of platelets. It will recover, but I mean, what it really needs is three, five years of grass, really, which will enable the earthworms to do their magic and in particularly for the uh, fungi in the soil uh, to help to recover the structure. Uh, you know, they're working, they're getting a really intimate relationship with the soil, uh, with the bacteria and, and with the earthworms, and they secrete a kind of mucus which kind of binds it all together uh, and, and makes it much more stable. There's nothing that we can do other than leave it alone. And as a farmer, <laughs> you know, there's the sort of paradox is that is almost everything we do to the soil is bad. It would be just so much happier and healthier, you know, left so it's either under a pasture, but even better under forest, because uh, uh, you know trees are fantastic for encouraging the fungi, which are, are so important. I mean, honestly, this is, uh, you know, it upsets me, but, but compared to many conventional fields, this is not bad. I mean, what you know, what damages soil is over cultivation, plowing to excessive depth, you know, applying poisons to the soil, so insecticides, fungicides, even herbicides, you know kill the life in the soil. I mean, there will be, you know, 10 times the diversity of, of bacteria and fungi in, a, in a, a well managed organic soil compared to an intensively cultivated and intensively sprayed um, conventional field. One of the main problems, if not the main problem, uh, we're looking after our soils is that you know, just about all our food crops are annuals, which means, you know, you have to cultivate the soil every year, turn it over, you know, all that violence and destruction and death that you cause in the soil in order to grow your crop. It would be just brilliant if we could just plant something and then come along and pick it every year, you know, and um, indeed I'm standing in a field of cardoons, but you can do just that. These were planted uh, three years ago or so. We, we harvest them twice a year. We take uh, the stems like this, which you can cook and they grow back. It's brilliant. We don't have to do any cultivation of the soil. And indeed, if I um, dig down here, that's pretty good structure. And you can see there's lots of organic matter being broken down on the top. 
loads of weeds. This is cooch grass, which is one of the worst weeds imaginable. But actually, the, um, it is actually really good for the structure. You can see the way the roots are just creating a fantastic structure in the soil. I mean, it's just beautiful. And the weeds are not necessarily such a bad thing, so long as they don't get to a level where they seriously compete with the crop. We just got to get away from this sort of one solution fits all approach to agriculture, which has led us to the, uh, you know, the, the monocultures of annual crops, which are destroying our soils. Mm -hmm.